Hello and welcome back. So in the last session we learned how to loop over policies and we learned a new concept called the for loop. Today we will take it to the next level. Not only will we learn another very important new concept, but we will start pushing configuration for the first time since the start of the series. So are you ready? Let's go. So uh, I just opened the script that we ended with in the last session. In that session, we learned a new concept in Python, which is the for loop. Uh, and that uh, concept, uh, we learned how to uh, loop over policies. And the for loop is a very simple construct, which exists in this case uh, out of just four words. Uh, as you can see here, it's very straightforward and it's not complicated at all but at the same time gives you a lot of power for automation to loop over things uh, which, which uh, provides a lot of uh, value in scripting. So uh, in the script, we ended with, uh, with a script that loops uh, over um, the policies and prints them out one by one. And now we will build further on that. So first of all, let's uh, save this file uh, as a new file. Uh, in my case, I will call it exercise five. Perfect, and we will uh, build upon that. So the ones that didn't do previous session, uh, please go back and do the previous session because the we will uh, build upon the script that we made in the previous session. Also, if you haven't installed the policies or you maybe you installed it uh, for the previous session but then had to do some uh, labbing on your own so you remove these policies to do your own policies, we will need the same policies again so we can uh, have the same behavior and you could see the same result as I see and we have unified configuration so that we won't face any uh, difficulties or errors that shouldn't uh, occur. So please, if you uh, don't have the configuration, uh, the same configuration as I have, please go to the description, uh, look at the uh, link in the description to, uh, to access the set commands to create the same policies objects as I have and then you could uh, you can easily continue with me and get the same result. So first of all, uh, the customer uh, security team asked again for our help to, to support them in, uh, in their needs. So the requirement is as follows. Let me just, I wrote it down here, copy paste it. So the requirement is, is very straightforward. Uh, the audit department they will provide us with a, a list of unused policies that they selected and uh, they need uh, to be disabled and uh, these policies need to be disabled and they have to add the to delete tag to these policies so this is the requirement uh, in something or a concept in scripting or software development and so on uh, that that is used a lot to to make it easier to start writing your script is called a pseudocode so uh, let me write it down here so pseudocode is actually a code that is written in human language or it is like uh, the requirement and more logical stepwise approach. So in our case, for example, this is one sentence I put here, but in most companies, it will be like a whole document uh, with a lot of fluff and a lot of uh, technical jargon and, and so on and so on. We don't need that. We will uh, read the requirement document and then e extract the exact information that we need to make our script, which steps do we need, and then build the script around that, uh, let's say, skeleton, which, which, which actually, uh, that, that, that's the, let's say, I wouldn't say definition, but that's what pseudocode is all about. So let me build it now. Uh, first step would be to connect to the firewall and get the policies. So it would depend, maybe uh, in my uh, other cases or uh, at some customer, maybe they will uh, do it in multiple steps. Maybe they, they, they generate a new API key every time they run a script. So it would be multiple steps will be connected to the firewall, get an API key, then get the policies and so on. But in our case, it's, it's one step. Then the second step would be go through the policies. And we know how to do that, right? We, we learned about the for loop and we went through the policies to print them out one by one in uh, the previous exercise. And then we come to the point in which we look at this. Okay. Um, so if 
the policy is in the list of unused policies we will do two actions right one is to uh, add to delete tag and disable the policy so i think with that we covered everything we could add a third step which is commit if we want to auto commit but again especially so early in our scripting journey we don't want to don't want to do that we want to confirm on the firewall itself uh, we just want the firewall or the script to do the heavy lifting so if we have a thousand policies i don't want to go through each policy and, and set a disable tag uh, to delete tag and disable the policy manually it will take too much time uh, i want to do i want the script to do that but i do want to uh, check everything uh, with a like a commit preview or, or a delta of the configuration uh, and and then uh, commit manually when i think everything looks fine so if we look at step one so most of the time uh, or you could actually start writing your code in between these lines to have these organized and and and, and go through it step by step but in my case i will not uh, i will keep it on the at the top uh, as, a, as a whole and then i will just copy paste uh, step by step uh, uh, so that we can use the, the the top as a reference so in my case connect to the file and get the policies we already do, did it here this part is already done covered let's go to step two go through the policies while we actually do it here so we go through the policies and then we come to step uh, 2.1 so 2.1 because it is we're looking at the policies and we want to see if the policy is in the unused list most probably it will be under the for loop right which makes sense because i want to check each policy each policy this means that i want to check it under the for loop so let us let us put this guy here and don't forget about indentation we learned it last time meditation is very important if not you will get a error let's say for example print policy i put it here if i run the script now python 3 example i call it 5 if i run the script now you'll see that i have all the uh, individual policies but if i would move it here i mentioned last time a specific error that pops up and it's a very important error uh, the name should be uh, printed into your head uh, but even the ID will show you here that something is wrong right so let me run it again now and this is the indentation error so again line gives you the line number line 38 very straightforward you could go to line 38 immediately and it shows you where the issue lies which is at the beginning of the print and then it clearly mentioned indentation error expected an indented block which is very straightforward this is an error that you have to remember so very simple if you get an error like this you just indent it so that it's under the for loop where it belongs and all is fine so we have now the for loop uh, we we need to uh, look at the following if the policy is in the list of unused policies first of all we don't have the unused policy list yet so let us create that one first i will create it at the top because it shouldn't be under the for loop so always remember if you don't want something to be repeated you have to put it outside so in our case unused policies and i'll give a couple of uh, policies that I have planned to be uh, or I plan to use in this example so it will be rule 01 rule I make it all caps rule 02 and then uh, rule 03 so remember this is a list because we have these square brackets if it would be a dictionary it would be these kind of brackets these curly brackets but because we use these square brackets this is how we build a list don't forget that so we build the list with the unused policies in this case it was provided by the audit department in the future uh, we will look at how we can open it from a csv or text file which is 
in most companies this would be the case that they give you a csv file or a text file with the policies that uh, they want you to disable or uh, tag or whatever so but for now just to not add too many concepts uh, together we will just use a list so um, now the logic is we have to look at uh, how do we check if something is in this uh, list right so uh, we could go back to our grocery list and 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 try to execute uh, a concept or look at the concept from from that perspective to make it very uh, easy so first of all let's uh, comment this one out so if we all we already learned how to make a single line comment okay now we will look at how we could do it for multiple lines so how do we do it for multiple lines one of the ways is just uh select the whole block right and then three single quotes now you see it became orange and now this is uh this is uh, a comment a multi-line comment so we could leave it like this and, and then later return to it when we finished our grocery uh, example so to go to our grocery example like last time we could you should be able to write this without any issue from your side so go ahead and, and already write it or item in grocery list but of course I first have to create a grocery list let's create the same one uh, as last time so you see now that it becomes very important to always create your variables first so it will help you a lot uh, when you create your logic here that it can, you can auto complete it but uh, let's go ahead bananas apples and i think it was chicken last time chicken so let's see grocery list so now it became blue so it's correct so for item we said last time we did a print item and that that was it so what if i want to make some uh, condition so in this case if the policy is in the list of unused policies so what if i want to print out something if <clears throat> if we have something within this list right so how, how would i go forward with it i think most people who ever heard anything about programming they learned about the concept uh, of if else and so on so i think this would be interesting to be used in this case because it's a condition we want to put a condition if this happens then we will do that so in my case for example for the groceries let's say i want to print something specifically if i found apples if i found apples in the list i want to print out uh, a text like oh, great i found apples because i'm happy i like apples and so on so the concept of an uh, if case in in in, a, in python is very complicated again uh, just like the for loop it's the same complexity so if and then we have a string which is apples in and then we put for example what do you think we have to put here grocery list yes then we print out yay found apples for example so how do you think the output will be go through it logically through the steps what would be the uh, the logic uh, let's run it now bananas yeah i found apples apples yeah i found apples chicken i found apples this is not what i wanted this is not the result that i wanted so we can check if apples in, is in the a grocery list right and this is what we do but every time we loop over an item we don't use for example uh, anything re regarding to the item we just set a condition so the condition is working because apples is in the grocery list right because if i would change this to xx for example and i would run it you see i don't get yeah i found apples because xx is not in the list so apples is in the list and this is correct that it printed out but why is it printing it out every time it found an item because this is not related to the loop that we're doing 
So we're just checking if apples is in grocery list, right? So grocery list does have apples every time because we're checking the list. We're not checking if it is equal to, uh, for example, item. So let us try to change that and say equals to item. Now let's print it out now and let's see. Now suddenly we have the result that we want. I hope you understand the difference because it's very important. So first of all, the if statement exists in general out of four words, just like uh, a for loop, right? So we use the same concept as a for loop for item in grocery list. We just said if then item in grocery list, for example. Uh, but in that case, it would print it every time because every time we evaluate this condition it's there it's not related to the for loop so we printed it out every time so now that we not just say if apples is in the grocery list but we say okay if apple is equal to item which we are looping over in that case we will print out yeah i found apples because now i'm evaluating that based on the the item that i'm looping over the one item I hope this is clear because it's very important what the difference is. Also very important is that this if statement here is underneath the for loop. So we need what? Indentation. And because the print is under the if statement, we need what? A second indentation. So every time you will have a construct like that, you will have to have an indentation, which is uh, four spaces, or you could use a tab, which is maybe easier. Of course, if you use an IDE, it will automatically do it. Like in my case, you see, it auto automatically did it. But uh, if, you, if you're not, you have to keep it in consideration. And also, if you get the indentation error, you have to know about that. So let's go back to our example now that we learned this new construct of if. So to comment out the same thing that we did before, or the, the code that we uh, commented out, uh, that we commented before we can just remove the single quotes uh, at the beginning at the end and now you see the color changed as well and we are ready to go so we said that we want to check if the policy is in the unused policy so how how would we do that i already explained in the grocery list and actually went deeper than just checking it so we have four policy and policies how would you check if the policy is in the unused list it's actually easier than our grocery list in which we we did additional things okay so you should have come up with something like this if policy which is the policy right in unused policies print okay right so let's see if that runs so we printed out policy which we will remove now to avoid any uh, confusion with the output and we did this and it didn't work why is that why is this not working for us now because I'm checking if policy and if the policies on the unused policies, which are these. And when I print out the policies, it looks like this. We should we need to access the name because this is what we this is what the auditors are sending us. They don't send us the complete uh, rule uh, as a, as a, as a, as a JSON or dictionary. They send us the name of the policies, which is enough for us. Right, because these are these rules or uh, uh, policy names are unique, so we should access the name. This is what we are comparing with the unused. Uh, that's what we are checking in the unused list, not the whole policy. And this is what we were doing here, because this is the whole policy. No, we don't want to check the whole policy if the whole policy is in the list, because it will never be. Because then it would mean that my list should exist of this exact setup, this exact setup, which is not the case. We are only looking at the name 
So let's see if this works for us. So we should have, because we have three rules of the, how many rules we have? If I was slow today, so uh, 11, so minus the two default ones is nine. So we have nine rules uh, and we have only three that are in the unused policy. So in theory, we should get how many prints of okay? Three. Okay, okay, okay. So it looks much better. So instead of printing okay because it doesn't offer much value, let us do the following. Let us uh, print out the name, but I want to access the name through a variable because we want to use it later to, to de uh, add the delete tag and disable the policy and so on. So uh, let's do the following. So we call this, for example, unused policy instead of un unused policies. And this variable will be equal to the name which is this right so for each time we loop over the policy if the policy name is in unused policies we will store the policy name in an unused policy variable and now for example at the end let's say we can print out uh, so let's give it a descriptive text because we will Add it to delete tag and disable the policy. We will say like uh, added to delete tag and disabled policy. And then, for example, we will put the policy here. Don't forget, we need to add the squirrely brackets and something else that we forget about. It's a uh, string and we want to reference a variable it should be a f string right this also changes the color so this is what we want so let's us also print a line below it just so we could have like a divider uh let's put it underscore 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 for a couple of times so that we know that there is a, a different policy and to visualize visualize it better so now let's print this out again. Perfect. So now we know that we checked the correct policies and we only, this is the condition, we only print this stuff out if, if the policy name is in the unused policy. Else we don't print. We don't see, for example, rule 22 or rule 21 or rule 15. Or no, we only see rule. 103 printed out, 02 printed out, 03 printed out, which means what? Which means that we are matching this condition. Remember when before, when we didn't access or match or search for the name in the unused policies and we tried to search the whole policy and the unused policy list, there, there we didn't get any printout. Why? Because it's valid code. It loops over the policies and then does nothing. Why? Because we didn't have a print. Let's say, for example, I add a print outside of the if you see what i did there let's go back if i print enter here the ide visual code assumes right assumes that i'm still under this f policy my code is under this f policy in this case when i print when i wrote this yes it was correct but now it's not because i want to print out the rest of the policies so how do i do that where do i print it out i don't want to print it out under the if policy because the rest of the policies will not show up here. So I will print it out under the for loop, which means that I need to remove these spaces or the, this tab, and the indentation will change instead of two to only one, because this is where the for loop li uh, lives, right? So if I remove if, this is the if, indentation for the if, and now the if is under the for, and I want the print to be also under the for. So let me print it out here and we will print out a uh, policy what should be the result now think about it little by little you will have to understand what you will expect from the code right so now if we run this the result would be that we do have the policy rule 03 right but at the same time we also have these policies, which is this guy. 
And even you will notice that, for example, for rule 03, I have rule 03 added blah, 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 which is this, because we match it. But for rule 21, we don't have it. And even for the rule 0, uh, 03, rule 03, we have this printed out. And after that, we have the policy. Why? Because of the order, right? So when we run code, we run it from top to bottom. So we, when we evaluated the for loop, we started with a for loop. We went through each one. If I match this condition, I print out this text for that policy, right? Like this. And after that, I exit this if statement, actually, this, uh, this condition. And then I just print out policy for the rest of the loop, uh, for the rest of the for loop. So that's why first I get this, and then I get the same for the policy for rule 0, 03 because I first evaluated uh, the if uh, the condition if it uh, lives in the unused policy and then I printed it out and after that I printed out the whole policy so no need for this let's go back I think everything is clear if not rewind the video and uh, watch it again but I think little by little everything becomes much uh, easier so now we have our condition, this part done. Now we have to focus on these two actions, which are to add to the lead tag and disable the uh, policy. So uh, let's, let's fill in, uh, let's add a comment as a placeholder to where we will add these actions. So here we will uh, API call to delete tag. To add to delete tag and then we have another api call which will be uh, api call to disable the policy all right so now before we always printed out stuff from the firewall we know how to do that we became experts in printing out information from the firewall we know how to do it through uh, something that we looked up in the API browser, something that we uh, saw in the CLI debug. Um, it's very straightforward, and we know how to extract the exact information by uh, uh, by accessing a dictionary. Now, now this is not just reading information. Now we are changing configuration, and in this case, both of them are adding configuration because we added to delete tag, and then we will also disable uh, the policy. So how do we do that? It's something new. We didn't do it before. So in that case, what will we do? We don't know how to do it. We will go through the documentation and see if we can find anything. So let's go again to the uh, Palo Alto API usage guide and see if we can find anything. Yeah, the system is slow today. So last time we went through getting started to generate our API key and to do our first API call. So let's see if we can find anything else. Um, request types looks interesting. Following topics provide common request examples that you can use to better understand the XML API. Okay. In our case, we do want to do some configuration. So let's see if we can find anything there. Okay, the request examples in these topics illustrate how you can use the uh, Panwise XML API to configure your file. I think we're getting closer. So we have different options here, get active configuration, set candidate configuration, and then you have set configuration. This one looks interesting as we want to add configuration, it looks promising. Okay, we have some examples. Let's see, create a new rule. It's not what we want to do today. Add, add a uh, member to an address group or list. Not what we want to do today. Create a new IP. No. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. So now we have enable or disable a security rule. This is exactly what we need. 
So what we can do is, like we did with the show system info API call, let's copy it and put it here as a as a comment. Uh, up. Let's just add it as a comment here for now as a placeholder. So we do see that we have a specific construct that is used. So first of all, something uh, that we need to take a look at. We already had a, a like a template for the request that we wanted to use in this API call here. So we had firewall IP, API action, API path, API key. Okay, so here we start with the action and then the API path and then the API key. While here they start with the key. Is that an issue? Uh, it shouldn't be an issue. We can uh, change the order. Most important is that you remember the following. So here you have an uh, ampersand, an N sign, right? Like this, like this. And it looks like this guy is dividing information. So if you look at it from, from, from left to right, you have ampersand type config, then action equals set, then x path equals to this. So it's kind of a divider. But whenever you have this divider, the first one will not be ampersand like this. It is a question mark. So whatever you start with is a question mark and the rest will be ampersand, right? So if I look at the, the example here, you see that after API, we start with type config instead of key, but still we start always with a question mark. Now this type config, oops, let me not move that. Type config suddenly moved behind the key and this question, it's not a question mark, it's an ampersand. So these parts, you can move them around. Just be sure that if I want to remove, for example, config, type config to the front and API key, uh, let's say a step further, then I will have to remove key equals API key, uh, sorry, to the back. I will have to, instead of type equal config, remove this ampersand and leave the question mark to start with. And then I could easily add, for example, uh, let's say the key uh, after, before XPath, for example, and key equals API key and XPath, so like this. So I move this from the beginning to the middle of the, of the API call, but the only difference is that uh, the question mark in this case for the key became an end sign because this question mark is only at the beginning and the rest will be an end sign. So you can move these around. If you have like in our case, like we had in our case, a template uh, and you do, you said, okay, I, I don't want to change it every time because I want to reuse it. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not an issue at all. You just have to be sure that you always start with a question mark. So we have this call. Let me copy this one. We don't want to store it in a value uh, in a variable because we don't get information. We could to get like the response if it's a success or not. But in our case for now, we're not going to check it. We will assume that everything is working fine. So no need to get any response. I will just get the uh, do the request the call. Okay, so we have firewall API, API action, API path. So the path, as you can see, it changed, right? So the X path is different because now we go into uh, we have something additional called an element equal disabled yes disabled. So let me let me go through the API browser and see this element because I want to double check it. So we will go to the API browser. Let's go here. And we, we still remember how to access the correct information, right? So if I go to configuration and then I go, for example, to, uh, let me go back into config device. Then we have below that, let me close this guy up. Let's go out also now. This is where the policies are. Then we should have a rule base where our policies are, and in our case, it's security policies. So this is our XPath 
and this is also the path that we could use in the uh, API browser. So let's go. We are now in configuration, config. We need to go to devices, entry, which is in our case localhost, the VSIS, which is VSIS1 as an entry, rule base, security. Then we should get our rules. So in my case, I want to check rule 01. And let me check um, disabled. So it, it does exist, but we don't get any response. So let us try to see uh, if, if something happens if we do disable the policy. I actually have like a test policy here on which I will uh, test this uh, behavior. We don't have this test policy because I, uh, I I added it just to test the removal of the or disable of the uh, of the policy. So let us go and do the same for the test policy so that there will be no surprises. Test disabled submit nothing so let's try to go and disable this policy okay let's make commit this so that the configuration is completely committed before we test again so going back while the commit is busy we see that we are accessing a specific element in this rule and we're setting a, a, a tag disabled to yes but when we access this disabled uh, uh, tag or element now, it doesn't show anything, right? Uh, as we showed just now in the test uh, policy. So let us check if, if, if after we commit, we see something or we see the behavior change. At the same time as well, we will create a new API path for the uh, disabling of the policy. So. Let me copy this xpath. So after and xpath, starting from that, I will create a new variable called, for example, uh, API disable xpath. Or we could do it in a better way in the sense that up to here, this is already our original API path, right? So up to rules. So if we go here, this was our original path. So we could leave this part and just add on top of that. So up to rules is already saved in the api path variable right so you can see here up to rules so we could just say like let's start from after rules because the rules doesn't end with the slash so we will include the slash after rules so like this and add it to the existing api call let's put it like this okay then of course we do have this guy here. We have to provide the rule name. And this is where we can use the variable that we created with the policy name of the policy where we match the condition, not all policies, because we don't want to make any changes for any other policies. So, of course, this is an F string. We will have to put the squirrely brackets and add the uh, variable here. In the meantime, my commit should be successful. I go back to the API browser. We're still at the uh, disabled uh, element and we don't get anything. Let's go back a step up. And let's submit it here. Now we do have a disabled tag because when we exit it, nothing appeared. But we do see that in the configuration of the uh, policy name, we see, do see an element called disabled, yes. And we did disable the policy. It is disabled now. So disabled, yes, seems to mean that we, if we disable the policy, uh, this tag occurs. So let's try again the same because we did do a uh, try to access the disabled itself or the disabled element through API. On, this, on the rule 01, but we didn't try to access the policy in general to see if the disabled tag is there. You see, disabled equals no. Because, 
There we go. Because we didn't disable this policy. Let's try another one. Rule 02. Submit. We don't have a disabled tag. So this is something for you to think about. But let me uh, say the following. Try to uh, play with um, disabling a policy and then re-enabling the policy and see if a behavior change happens. This is for you to test on your own. But as you can see now, uh, in some cases, the disabled is no. Like for rule 01, it is not disabled. Disabled is no. In some cases, you don't have any disabled tag at all, which in that case also, the policy is not disabled. But when we have disabled yes, the policy is disabled, right? So this is what we need to do or need to access or configure if we want to disable the policy through API. The same as that, uh, the same they mentioned in the documentation, but we want to take it a step further to not just copy paste the documentation and hope uh, that everything goes fine. So it looks like this API call is correct and we should be able to, um, to execute this API call to disable the uh, policy. So let's run this and see what happens. So in this case, what would happen if it works? We have three policies in our unused policy. We run this API call within the condition if it is within the list. So we should have these three rules uh, disabled. Let's run it and see what happens. The print is happening, but did it disable it? Let's refresh our policies. Hmm. Something is wrong here because it did not disable the policies. And there's nothing that changed. So let's let's do the following. I just want to print out this stuff to the screen to manually paste it in the <clears throat> in the GUI. Let's print this out. Okay, so let me take one of the first API calls for rule zero one. Very simple. I can run it here. Okay, so we have response state is success, which is okay. And we do get the information back, but still not disabled. Mm -hmm. Let us take a closer look at the, the API call here. So uh, type config and action equals get x path. Uh, ta -ta -ti, ta -ta -ta. Mm. What do you think the issue could be? Let's go back to the uh, configuration. We had different kind of configurations that we could use in our API call. Set configuration, edit configuration, rename configuration. Okay, so this one was in actions. Oh, okay. Let me check. Okay, so here we had the action get. While when we make configuration, we have to have the action set. So, while we have this action as a get, even though we, we, we did put the whole API path, and when we put it in the browser, we did get the configuration of the policy because it's a get. So let's try to put it as set. And let's see if, if it will work then. So again, let's uh, add a API action. Will we put it in the for loop or in the if close rule or outside? Outside, because we don't want to loop over it and every time assign a new variable called API action get, for example. Uh, or in this case, it's set, right? And we will call this guy action equals set. And then, course our API call should not use the standard API action which is now get but should be set and just to avoid any confusion let's rename this guy as well API action get because maybe in the future we want to get more information and then we will have a set uh, and maybe we have something else so we renamed it to get instead of set so let's run the script again and see what happens. Okay, so let's refresh it here. 
And look at that. This just worked perfectly. Rule 01, Rule 02, Rule 03, all of them are disabled, which are the three policies that we have in our uh, list. So for now, the disable works fine. It works perfectly. And uh, this is the result that we were looking for. And even if we look at uh, the policy, it won't show, uh, because we didn't commit yet, it will show differently a little bit. You will see just right now. But it should show like rule 02 didn't have any disabled tag. So let's see if now it has a disabled tag. So you see that disabled? Yes. While we still didn't commit, you will see things like this, right? So uh, this you can ignore because uh, it's like a temporarily until we commit. But you do see that disabled? Yes. Well, before it didn't even have the disabled tag at all for rule 0. Uh, two. So this seems to work fine. Uh, let's go back to our uh, script. We finished one part of the actions, but we said we have two actions. We also have to add the do, do delete tag. So how do we do that? So we know that when we want to access or configure a specific part of the policy, we saw that we have the X path, which is like the general path up to the policy but then if we want to edit a small element within that policy we saw this uh, let's say um, behavior of this end element which is like an element of the policy so how do we how do we do that what would be the logical sense to try out and, and see because again as i mentioned before the documentation will gu guide you up to a point but it won't generate every single or have a, a entry for every single thing that you can configure that's why we we looked at for example the uh, api browser that we're still using the api uh, debug or the gui debug we have the cli debug and so on so based on on logic let's say we want to experiment what would be uh, our next step so let's copy this request and let's put it under or API call to delete tag. So to add add to delete tag. So element. Mm, let's say instead of a, 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 a tag element, we could maybe say that if we look at it here. Again, submit. Let's go to the test because we don't want. Look at test. We have disabled here. Which is the element and then we have something else tag member and then we have the tag here so this is one let's say tag here they use two like tag and then they have a member let's see if we can try to build this similar structure so we have tag right and we close with tag as well and then in that we do have member so, slash member and here we should add the uh, to delete tag so just to make it easy for us maybe we can uh, assign a variable to to delete or we can just put it hard coded because maybe in the future i will that the audit will decide that we will use a different tag name let's create a variable as well for this so uh, to delete tag sorry, tag equals to delete so now this is a variable again outside of the loop because we want to reuse it uh, and not every time uh, assign this variable again and again and again so let's put it here so the rest is the same right we still have to set it because we're making configuration change we still use the unused policy which is the same policy and we just added the element to be uh, uh, going to the tag don't forget this will not work because we need to put it between curly brackets to access the variable let's run it now and see if it works
I should just have refreshed the policies and stuff the whole page. Anyhow, so looks great, right? So for each rule that we disabled, which is rule 010203, not only is it disabled now, but we also have a to delete tag on top of it. So our, our script is taking shape and we are actually doing what the customer requested. Of course, for three uh, policies, you would say, let me just quickly go into the GUI and left and right, click, 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 and it's done. But if you have hundreds of policies, and this happened to me multiple times, after migrations, uh, policies that are not used anymore because the traffic flow changed or the firewalls were migrated as is with all the policies, but actually in reality, now they're distributed over different firewalls and so on, you will have to clean up thousands of policies. So our script is working, but I, as always, when you do a, a script in a lab, maybe it doesn't represent all the, 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 the configurations that you could have at the customer. So we will just uh, look at a scenario, for example, in which we have a policy without a tag. So let me try this test policy. Or let me try the following. Let me go over uh, pop, 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 rule 01. And then remove the policy, for example, the tag. Let's see if our script will still work. Because now we will add a delete tag, right? So let's see if, if it will still work. Let's also re-enable my test policy. Sorry, enable. And let's commit that. So that it will take place. So while we are uh, committing the configuration, so of course we do print out this information here. Um, let's remove this line. I don't want that anymore. It's very clear that uh, we only print out when we have a policy uh, that is in the unused list. And of course the, uh, the uh, guys from audit, they want to prove that everything happened correctly and they want the output as a reference uh, to what happened. So again, Later, we could build a whole logging uh, setup and, and write it to a file. But for now, just we could just, again, pipe it or throw it in a file. And let's call it uh, disable policies, the date, which is 6 March 2023.csv.txt. it's running the script and now if we do this we see that we do have a file with all the output that we printed out to the screen as an audit file or as a uh, reference uh, log file so let's go back to rule 01 rule 01 is still disabled and has to do delete tag and i made a stupid uh, mistake to commit it uh before rolling back the configuration and that's because uh, uh in the lab i don't take it much in consideration but uh in production these are mistakes that would cost you so while i did a commit for another change which was to remove the normal uh tag i did a commit for everything while running the uh uh while running the script so this would cause me to what to have all of these policies disabled regardless if, if, if I, I was right or wrong or without any uh, checking but of course if we go to revert changes because i didn't run the script uh, before the commit i did it after the commit so i am saved just i wanted you to understand that if i would have done it uh, during before i did the change or before i did the commit then this would have disastrous consequences always keep that in consideration always roll back if, if something is wrong if you're testing in your lab as well to avoid that your configuration also will be messed up so in this case we have rule 01 without a, 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 a tag right we actually already run the script to get the output in the file uh, so and we see that it still works but let's try it again just for good measure so that you uh, understand that everything is working fine so let's refresh it again 
perfect so instead of having the normal and to delete now because we removed the normal uh, we just added to delete tag which is correct and it didn't impact anything regarding to the script and for the others ones it added it on top of the normal tag or top of the existing tags because we want to keep the existing tags uh, because in the end when uh, let's say for example uh, later audit discovers that this policy shouldn't have been disabled we could just uh, re-enable it and remove the to delete tag and all the original tags will still be there so that was the script for today um, i hope you enjoyed it um, it is a, a very important concept that we learned again today so before we learn the for loop which uh, which exists out of four simple words in this construct uh, the if uh, uh, if uh, uh, condition as well it's the same it's it's very simple four simple words so very powerful things we can now loop over configuration we can check for a specific condition for example try go out and try to evaluate uh, things maybe not push configuration if you don't want to but for example you could uh, check if a uh, for example uh, a specific zone is is is, uh, is uh, in the policy if the specific zone is in the policy or if a specific uh, source is in a policy if the specific source in the policy print out this or do that or disable the policy maybe you can just reuse the same api calls if you want to experiment try to do new api calls but go out there and try to do as much as you can uh, again not in production uh in, in your lab the, the same lab that we're using now and and try to 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 find conditions that you want to match try think about scenarios that in the past you wanted to do for example in the past i had that um if a zone was uh, x i wanted to do add a tag to it for example if the zone was uh destination zone was internet i wanted to add uh, outgoing with a red tag for example so that it's clearly marked in the firewall that this is an outgoing policy uh, be aware something like that now you should be able to do that with uh, what you learned today so in this case it would be if then try to accept the destination zone right and then in this case we don't have to check in a policy so it would be like this you don't have to have a condition which for example n x or equals to like we did in the shopping list no it can just be if policy destination is what how would you say it like this if and then for example zone name here in policy and then how do you access the uh, policy uh, destination name then do this i'm not saying this will work it's up to you to find out but i'm just giving an example of the opposite that you could check a a a a, uh, a uh, let's say text in a specific field and this is how you would check for a zone for a specific destination specific service for example you want to check if we are using HTTP as a service if, and then how do you check it? That is up to you. So go ahead, experiment a little bit. I will revert what I was writing here. This is not for now. Go out there and uh, hopefully you had fun today, just like I had. And uh, let's see and wait for the next session.